Doom is one of the most iconic first person shooters of all time. Released all the way back in 1993, it has changed the way we see FPS games today. So I thought why not remake the original game in the most basic game engine there is. Scratch, a visual programming language designed primarily for beginners where games are created by dragging around blocks. I have remade multiple games in Scratch on my channel so far, but this is by far one of the hardest challenges we're about to attempt. The reason this challenge is so difficult is because we will be attempting to create a 3D game in a simple 2D engine. Scratch has no option, or even a triangle render, or even the slightest support to rendering. However, there is a simple tool called Pen, which comes with Scratch that makes it draw simple lines and dots. However, that's still not enough. The performance in Scratch is very bad, and so we will be using TurboWrap to help with that. TurboWrap is a scratch mod with a compiler to run projects faster, but even with that performance, the performance still isn't the best. This means we need to find a rendering method that can cope with all of these limitations. First, we need to understand that we are not making a 3D project. What we are making is an illusion on a 2D screen that looks 3D. We also have many methods of making this illusion. To get an idea on how this can be tackled, I hit up my friend Zayton, who has dealt with this problem before and we got to work. We wondered what option to go with as we have the following two options. Methods that use math to calculate points and fill between them. Two, methods that use rays, simple lines that find distances between the player and the map, helping to see the view. Between these two options, we ended up going with using rays. Ray casting is a simple way to create an illusion of 3D. Think of a simple dot on a map. This dot wants to see the map from its perspective, so it sends a smaller dot that keeps moving until it hits the wall on the map. After it hits, it tells the dot the distance that is moved. We can use the distance to draw a vertical line. The longer the distance is, the shorter the line is. This means if we do this for every pixel on the screen, stacking the vertical lines next to each other and move the small dot for every line of those, a small simple view will appear. Awesome. Now we can add textures, floors and ceilings and entities and hold on, what about the difference in heights? Can ray casting have these? No. Sadly, the ray will stop as soon as it touches the wall, thus ignoring everything behind it. So what can we do about this? Here comes ray listing. An idea about not stopping the ray, we can use scratch list to store the data and now we draw the list in reverse order and now no walls will be ignored in the ray casting. It's simply amazing. We imported the project into TurboWrap, but to ensure the challenge is still in Scratch by default, we didn't use any unofficial extensions. Now we can initialize multiple variables such as the camera's position X, Y, and Z, along with the direction which the camera looks at. We also initialize the map which the rays will be hitting. Next, we did some work on the camera's main functions using trig functions of sine and cosine. We now enter a very important decision. How do we move the ray? Imagine now that you are the ray and I'm recording how long you take but you have a special power you can control how much you move in a single step sure i'll stop the timer when you hit a wall but i want you to hit it in the best accuracy and least time obviously you will turn up the step distance to something very big and in a single step you are going to move some very long distance it is as though you are teleporting but chances are you're going to teleport inside the wall or even miss it if you actually hit the wall you're actually still going to be inside it thus giving an inaccurate distance and we don't want that okay how about you tune the steps size to something balanced. You're going to slow down and even with that, be a little inside the walls, giving yet again inaccurate distances. Okay, but how about we tune it to something really small? You're going to be hella slow, but get almost perfect distances. But now you're taking the whole day to reach the wall. So what do we do? This problem seems impossible to solve. Well, here comes DDA, short for Digital Differential Analysis. It's an algorithm that allows you to move big steps in pixel perfect distances. How in the world? Well, it's smart math. DDA needs to make two parts. Initialization, which happens every time a ray is ready to cast, and traversal, which actually calculates the size of the step and moves the ray. This needs some variables like step x, y, and length x, y. Now, 
Finally, the ray colliding scripts come to life. To reduce these lists, we use an encoder to join all the map data into one list item. But now, how are we going to read that? Well, we made a decoder which reads the format and splits it into how the data was again. Now, the ray moves and collides. But what's missing? It's the actual ray listing. As before, ray listing is just saving collision data or simply the data that the decoder gives us. So we made the decoder add the data to properties list such as height distance and textures which are right now only colors. You're probably thinking when is the actual Doom gameplay going to come in? Don't worry that will come soon because remember we are literally making a 3D view on a 2D engine so all this groundwork needs to be set in place for 3D Doom to even happen. We added the texture and performance started to become slow so we had to implement backface culling. Backface culling is a performance optimization that avoids drawing polygons that are determined to be facing away from the camera. So we essentially remove the unnecessary parts that are rendered but never seen. Now comes the fun part, making the map. But it's also the most difficult part. This is because we can't import the map. It means that we now have to make every single detail by hand. It also took a lot of time as there's only blocks and no map editor. But before we continue, thank you Milano for sponsoring this video. Milano is a tool for organizing your creative projects and was used for this challenge at first we thought of using Trello, but that would limit us in many aspects. So that's where Milanote shines. The interface is extremely fun, visual, and easy to plan out your games with. As you can see, I have everything I need right here, from design references to my to-do list. I gathered some visual inspiration and key design elements from the original game. This is our design slash references board. Here, we've mapped out the level design with the visual references from the original Doom game. I can add notes, images, videos, tasks, and more all in one place. Milano makes starting a new project easy with over 100 built-in templates. Milano is available for free with no time limit. It's a tool I highly recommend to get started with on your next creative project. You can sign up completely for free with no subscription using the link below. So after a long time of constant creation and many problems, we finally had Doom's episode 1 map. Finally, we come to the last but also most interesting problem, the entities. We can make this in many ways. We can raycast the entity which will be very easy to make but will result in the entity's jittering and unstable gameplay. So we thought of a different but more complex approach which is using a completely different renderer for the entities. So we started by making a similar encoder for the entities. Then we made a repeat loop check for the entities drawing one at a time. The entities are just points with x y and z so we use a rotation formula that rotates a point around another after this we use projection to project the rotated x y and z into an x y only which we can place on the screen and now the first part is done when we are about to draw the entity we do this check to decide whether we will draw it or not first we find the line with the same x on the screen as the entity x on the screen after that we look at the lines distance and then at the entity's distance if the entity's distance is less than the the lines it's in front of it so you draw the entity however if the entity distance is more than the lines then it's behind it and we don't draw it and now we just worked on the entity's ai and so we have the enemies working now after all that work we present to you doom in scratch 